Well, hello, my friends. This is Lori Smith. This is Comfort at the Midnight Hour, and I'm glad to be here. My computer connection, my internet connection is slow tonight. And unfortunately, <laughs> it, it tends to be worse at night than it is in the daytime. So um, if I'm speaking slowly, it's because I'm waiting for my connection to kind of reconnect there. And um, so that the video doesn't lag, right? So frustrating, um, but you know it is what it is, and I, I can't do anything about it because I have top internet service. But um, because I'm downtown, it's uh, it's sporadic, so it's gone out again. It's showing that it's gone out again. We'll just get right into this. I want to start out with prayer. This is sort of a, a, a time that just to spend, that I like to spend with people who may be hurting and just have nobody to talk to, and you're just sitting around by yourself, and you're just thinking. Nobody cares, you know. I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, so many times we're in a situation like that where really nobody does care, and uh, that's the truth of it. And sometimes, you know, it just seems like, you know, how can we keep going like that, right? I've been there, so that's why I like to do this show, and you know, just to come alongside somebody who's hurting anybody, and just be sort of a, a gentle voice to come alongside you and say, you know what, God loves you, and so do I. So I want you to stick it out, and hopefully you'll you'll you know feel comforted by this. Um, I try to pick material out that I think is beautiful and you know comforting, um, you know, to people who are struggling or suffering and just not sure if God really does even acknowledge them or love them or know who they are and know what they're going through. I, you know, because we've all been there. Everybody's been hurt at some point. And sit there and says, you know, and says, does God even see what's going on in my life? Right? Does He know? Does He care? I'm here to tell you that he does. And, you know, I've asked the same questions myself, right? <laughs> so, um, you know, if, after becoming a Christian and accepting Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I still ask those questions. Uh, sometimes we feel like God is so far away from us, but he's really not. He's right there. All we need to do is call upon his name. So be sure and, and do that, right? So I just want to pray before we start. Father God, you see all around the world, you know all of you, all of us, you know us all. You know where we're at. You know what we're going through, all the trials and tribulations and troubles that we face on a daily basis. And that many people are sitting around tonight or today, wherever they are on the earth, and they're, you know, they're they're hurting, they're in pain, they're suffering. And whether it's physical, you know, pain, whether it's emotional pain, psychological pain, spiritual pain, you know, they're just they don't know how they're gonna keep going. They don't know how they're gonna go another moment. They're gonna some of them are contemplating whether they can do another another hour. And some of them are holding on, fighting for their lives, wondering if you hear them and you hear their cries. Father God, we know that you do. And meet their needs, Lord. Meet all of their physical needs. Meet their, meet their emotional needs, their spiritual needs, their psychological needs. Help them, Lord, to get through this night, or through the day, wherever they are on the earth, Lord. Because you are our helper, and you're the only one who can truly help us. Um, we need you, Lord, every step of the way. I'm asking you to intervene with with divine intervention into the people's lives tonight who are hurting the Lord and calling out upon your name all around the world. You hear them, Lord. I can hear them, too, in my spirit. And I know there's so many people out there that are hurting. And how to reach them, Lord, only, only through and by your precious spirit, through your precious Holy Spirit. And reach your arms around the world to help these people in Jesus' name, Amen. So we'll get started. I want to look at. I have a bit of allergies here tonight. <laughs> this is the summer. I've got allergies. It's it's just normal. Uh, I want to look at uh, start out with the hymns of the Holy Eastern Church, and this is from Brownlee, Robert Brownlee, and he translated these hymns into uh, from the Greek into English. And uh, this is like, it's, uh, it's not under copyright, really. It's old, 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 like from the early 1800s. <laughs> so, you know, it's pretty old. So you can find these. But he, he there's many people that translated these um, hymns into English and other languages. Uh, and you can just type into the browser, hymns of the or, or Holy Eastern Church, and, and it'll, you know, all sorts of stuff will come up. And many people have translated these, and, and a lot of them are not under copyright. And so you can um, you could 
excuse me, <laughs> you can um, get a PDF copy for free right, and read them yourself. Right, they are beautiful. So this one is. Um, look at it here tonight. Stichera of the Resurrection. When wicked hands had firmly sealed the silent tomb, then camest thou forth, O Christ, as from the virgin's womb. Thine incarnation angels viewed with wondering, wondering gaze, and soldiers saw the empty tomb in strange amaze. Search they in vain, those mysteries lay in night concealed. The God-man and his rising were forever sealed. Yet to the humble who by faith their Lord adore, those mysteries fade before their sight forevermore. Grant us who sing those mysteries now a claim to praise, and let thy mercy bless our lives now and always. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, I need God's mercy, I tell you that. And I mean, you know, when we're sitting around in this place where, you know, we're possibly by ourselves, there's nobody around, and nobody seems to care, and maybe some people care, but they can't help. Um, you know, who do we have but God to reach up, reach out to? Right? And who is better equipped to help us other than God? That's the question. None, right? God is our helper. And so, you know, when we're sitting around, we do need to make sure that you call upon the name of the Lord. And also reach out to people around you. That's really important. Like sometimes we don't have people that in our direct you know, contact, maybe we're on our own. So many people are on their own, you know. I'm not I'm not really the only one that's on my own apart from friends. Thank God I do have some wonderful friends that just don't live anywhere near me. Um, so you know, I'm kinda on my own in in a, in a big city and you know, it's like um nobody close. My husband passed away in twenty eighteen and you know, it's just me and the Lord. And so I don't have anybody else to call upon except for the Lord and you know, I'm so thankful. But I'm also thankful for many wonderful people who have come into my life you know especially since starting you know doing the broadcasting and stuff people drop me these wonderful little notes and messages and it does make me feel really good and sometimes you know we're just sitting on our own and we're struggling and it's like wondering how how we're even going to do another day how we're going to do another another night of this right and you know i think most people can relate most people most likely understand like what that feels like because we all know what it is to hurt you know we all know what it is to be in pain physical pain as well as emotional pain spiritual pain you know whatever kind of pain you're going through my connection's horrible tonight sorry about that <laughs> so sort of slow down a little bit so it'll catch up right because otherwise it'll be it sort of messes with the video so it's stressful, but what can you do? I have way better connection in the daytime than I do at night. So it's a shame, but something's blocking my connection here tonight for sure. But, um, you know, we just need to call, like I said, call upon the name of the Lord if you're hurting and struggling and reach out around you, right? Very important. So if you have to, you call a crisis line. I want, if you're, if you're joining me here tonight, you're listening sometime tonight or, you know, in the next day or two, whenever you happen to catch this, if you happen to actually listen to the whole thing, wonder what the heck I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, um, if you're struggling and you're hurting, you need to make sure you reach out. You need to stick it out. You need to stick it out. You know, I mean, if, if I can stick it out, you can stick it out. You know, that's my main message. If I can do it, you can do it. And it's not easy. It's not easy to get through these things. It's not easy what people are suffering and going through you know, is it's not easy to deal with. And it doesn't mean that there, and, and a lot of times there's no, no quick answer to the pain. So we're stuck in it for, you know, ages. And it just seems like, you know, when is it going to change? When is it, when is it going to get better? So I'm just speaking slow because my internet connection is so horrible tonight. I can see it coming in and out. <laughs> oh, well, that's okay. I'm still here. <laughs> I'm sticking it out. I'm like a dog with a bone. So yeah, we just need to make sure that we do use those resources and rely on 
what God places in our lives to, to get some help, right? And also just rely on God to make a way where there seems to be no way. Because God is He's the way maker. You know, He always makes a way where there seems to be no way. Because He can do that, right? He's the only one that can do that. Praise God. <clears throat> so we'll look at uh, this is uh, here the ancient wisdom, a meditational reader for the whole year from the early church fathers up to the pre Reformation. This is Ringma, and this is probably under copyright, so we won't read the whole thing. I'm just going to read a few of these um, because it's they're just so beautiful. And let's see here, my connection's back on. <laughs> this is uh, the God who is for us. The God of the biblical story is both holy other and holy concerned. This God is both veiled in mystery and made himself known in the nakedness of Golgotha's cross. The grand song of the biblical narrative is that God, the creator of the world, is especially attentive to humanity. And this attentiveness is not like critical parents frustrated with their teenage son or daughter. Even though God is before all things and above all things, God has chosen to enter the human prey. And we can know God not only in the otherness of God's mystery, but in the presence of God's caring love. And St. Augustine gets to the heart of all this. He writes, I have always believed that thou art and that thou hast a care for us. And the mere knowledge of God is not the heartbeat of the biblical story. The center of the narrative is that this God draws near. This God cares. This God comes to redeem and make us whole. And it is in Christ that we can most fully see the way in which God is drawn near to us, fully amongst us, full of compassion, full of grace, full of healing power. The God who is for us is not the God who seeks to control, but is the God who seeks to make us whole. God's care is one of self-giving love. And the safest, this is a reflection, the safest place in all the world is to be sheltered in the love of God. Sheltered in the love of God. Sheltered in Him. Before I met the Lord, I was lost. I mean, I was in a dark, dark place and, you know, contemplating suicide my whole life. And from the age of 10, really, I started to realize that I needed to be dead. I was I was, I was spiritually dead and I felt like, you know, my body should just be following right along with it. Right? And so, you know, God got a hold of me and I, I and life and truth and goodness and mercy and compassion and real love entered my heart. And, you know, was, the transformation was so huge, um, you know, I'll never forget it. And so, you know, he does care. He does love us. And we have to open up our heart to receive that love. Right? And I didn't know how to receive love because I, I had never learned how to properly receive love um, because I was abused as a child. So, you know, um, I had to learn how to open up my heart to God and allow him pour his love into my heart, praise God, which he did. So, you know, um, I know what it's like to be sitting on the other side of that, you know, in the darkness. And sometimes we still get to those places, even though yeah, we may have, we may be in Christ Jesus, born again. We may completely understand, you know, the, the, the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ that we're saved, born again, renewed. And we still have those dark nights of the soul, you know, where we need this, we need this comfort from, from, from coming from somewhere. And really, it can only really come from God. So to keep you holding on, you know, because this world is, is dying, lost and dying. And so, you know, we're bound to be affected by it. So we need to, we need to immerse ourselves in the love of God and allow him to, completely surround us and cover us with his love with his care with his with his grace and his mercy and his compassion because that all comes from god you know so yeah you need to open up your heart to receive that love right which is what i had to learn how to do so it's not easy but it can it's doable and i want to look at this is um, this is songs for all season. This is from um, S. Dryden Phelps. These are from the 1800s, and so they're not in copyright. And you can go and get this PDF off online. And he's got some beautiful. They're called songs for all seasons. They're hymns, like 
of poems, right? So that he wrote and other people wrote. I think he compiled a whole bunch of work. He's got some of his own stuff in there too, I think. Um, so we'll check that out. So hopefully my connection will straighten up here. This is the worst connection I've had so far, I think. This is in Gethsemane. So this is, um, let me see if I can see a date here, 1882, in Gethsemane. One day, to memory dear, I knelt in lone Gethsemane on the same ground where Jesus felt what none could feel but he. While praying there, it truly seemed the Lord himself is here. I scarce before had thought or dreamed that he could be so near. Among those great old olive trees, a low wind faintly moans. T'was Jesus' prayers upon the breeze with agonizing groans. I note the soft dew still appears on rose leaves lingering yet. The pearly drops were Jesus' tears that this sad garden wet. The crimson flower and scarlet bud are blooming sweetly round. Ah, they are those great drops of blood once falling to the ground. I see that dark and awful hour the cup received is given. The deathly strife, the conqueror's power, the angel help from heaven. While direful hues my sin assumes, my soul condemned and lost. The way of life that seen that scene illumes and shows the ransom cost. Gethsemane, the hallowed shade, thy tender memories dear, that day of days can never fade, and Jesus still is near. <laughs> Call upon him while he is near. Isaiah 4, verse 6. Um, thou art not far from the kingdom of God. Mark 12, verse 34. Beautiful. So, yeah, I mean, this is just it. Uh, Jesus knows, you know, you know what it is to, to, you know, to suffer. You know, he took upon himself the sin of all mankind. And um, to be the sin bearer, he was sinless. He was pure. And, you know, he was God in the flesh, the God man. And, you know, he knows what it is. He knows our frame because he's our creator. And he knows what we're made of. He knows how hard it is for us. You know, and he's, he's our great shepherd he's the great shepherd of our of our souls he's the he's the great high priest hallelujah making intercession on our behalf because he knows our frame he knows that we are but dust right and that you know we can't do it apart from him and so he does love us absolutely does he laid down his life for us he laid down his life for me i used to feel unworthy and unloved because i grew up abused and just rejected you know especially by my mom, which really hurt because my dad I didn't have a great relationship with and I didn't care so much about my dad, but um, it's not that I didn't care about him. I just, you know, I wasn't worried about having a relationship with him. My mom was a different story. I wanted her to love me and I wanted her to care about me. And it, it really broke, it really broke me as a person than to have her reject me so horribly. And which she did to all of her children. So I was just the last one, but um, I really took it hard. And it's, I think some of the, my other siblings kind of ignored it, maybe didn't pay much attention to it, whereas it really affected me because I loved my mom. And so to have, to grow up like that and to feel unloved and unwanted, this rejection, you know, um, it was a hard thing to deal with for sure. And just feeling like, you know, so unlovable. Then how could God love me? You know, um, this is sort of the thing, you know, I'm unlovable, right? I think many times people feel that they are not worthy, right? And why should they care about God? Why should they, <clears throat> why should they care about God's love, you know? Why does it matter? Well, because all good things come from God originally. And, you know, God is love. He's light, love, light, truth, and goodness, and mercy, and compassion, and everything that is good. And those are the things that we that we need, you know. And that's what most of us don't have in our lives, is this compassion and mercy and, you know, goodness and everything that is light and truth. It's filled, our lives are just filled mostly with this fallen world system, which is full of death and destruction and decay and evil, you know. And so, you know, I just, I'm so thankful to God got a hold of me and chased me down, literally, 
because <laughs> I was running from him. And, you know, I'm so thankful that he got a hold of me and just poured his love into my heart. That love that, you know, that came in and said, you know what, I love you, my daughter. So, yeah, you know, I finally, you know, get to feel what it's like to be that someone would love me enough that they would go to the cross and take my place on the cross. You know, take my sin upon themselves and, and wipe my slate clean and add my name to the Lamb's Book of Life because I accepted his, his sacrifice. Praise God. So, you know, it is it's life changing. And it doesn't mean, like I said, many many times people think, oh, well, you know, you're you're a Christian, you're born again, so your life must be great. And it's like, well, no, because I mean, I'm struggling most of the time. But the issue is, is not spiritually. So, I mean, spiritually, I'm in great shape. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm with the Lord all the time. So, um, you know, I'm communing with God all the time. But, you know, physically, I'm, in, I'm falling apart. And, 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 um, and uh, in the world system, in the world's, you know, situation, things just aren't that great. You know what I mean? But God keeps making a way. Right. And I'm like, he just keeps making a way, right? Where there seems to be no way. That's why I keep doing these shows. Because I'm like, he keeps making a way. I'm just gonna keep doing the I'm just gonna keep doing it. Because he keeps making a way for me to keep doing it. He keeps my internet going, he keeps making a way for me to have, you know, uh, uh, provision, you know. Like most people would say, Your life sucks. You know, most people that personally know me, they know what I'm going through. And you know, I think they feel sorry for me because they're like, you're screwed. But I'm not, though, because I have the Lord, right? So, you know, wherever he takes me, that's where I go. Because eventually I'll be going home to be with him, praise God. And I know a lot of people that are up there. I'm sure my husband is, because I, I mean, I do talk about that. I talked about the situation with my husband when he passed away, what happened. And it was amazing. Most people don't believe those stories because they weren't there to see it. Right? But I just tell it anyway because I'm telling the truth. Right? So um, just amazing. Right? So, yeah, we need to just trust God with the plan. This, this life is short. And, you know, when I started to, when, when, when God got a hold of me and I was born again, every, everything changed, even though I still had to deal with all the heartache from being abused. And that's why I did all those shows. And I really, you know, allowed myself to heal from that stuff. I probably could have just let it go, but I, I, it was so damaging. And so the depth of it had, it had just had it permeated everything about me. I needed to work through it, you know, for some reason. So, so I did, it took me a long time, but in the meantime, I'm just worshiping God. I'm happy to be able to, to just stay in his word and worship the Lord and go where he wants me to go. You know? So, I mean, most people would say my life is, is not that great, you know, because I'm, I'm always possibly facing homelessness and always losing my jobs. Every time, every other year, I lose a job. And, you know, it's like I cannot find a good job. And, you know, it could be me, right? I mean, I, I try to, I'm really hard to be a good employee, but, you know, hey, none of us are perfect. We, I know the one who is perfect, though, praise God. So, you know, it's tough, right? These things are hard. Like I was saying last night, I mean, I know lots of people who are struggling and, you know, cancer and all sorts of health issues and homelessness and all sorts of troubles right so personally i know these people and there's nothing i can do to help them except for pray just pray for them which i do I keep them in my prayers and i i reach out to them you know online because we're so many thousands of miles apart but you know just try to do the best you can to be there for somebody even though they're not close right uh it's tough right? these things are tough I want to look at, um, this is the Complete Works of St. John of the Cross. This is the, the, lady, the Order of Our Lady of Mount Car Carmel. He's written some beautiful material here. And this is, um, this is the first part of the stanzas that he wrote, uh, Ascent of Mount Carmel. And this is the stanza, uh, the first of the stanzas, and then we'll read some more if we have time. It says, in an obscure night, with anxious love inflamed, O happy lot, forth unobserved I went, my house being now at rest. In darkness and obscurity, by the secret ladder disguised, O happy lot, in darkness and concealment, 
my house being now at rest. In that happy night, in secret scene of none, seeing not myself without other light for guide, save that which in my heart was burning, that light guided me more surely than the noonday sun to the place where he was waiting for me, whom I knew well, and where none but he appeared. O oh, guiding night, O oh, night more lovely than the dawn, O oh, night that hast united the lover with his beloved, and changed her into her love. O oh, my flowery bosom, kept whole for him alone. He reposed and slept, I kept him in the waving of the cedars fanned him. Then his hair floated in the breeze that blew from the turret. He struck me on the neck with his gentle hand, and all sensation left me. I continued oblivion lost, my head was resting on my love. I fainted away abandoned, and amid the lilies forgotten, threw all my cares away. Says the dark night through which the soul passes on its way to the divine light of the perfect union of the love of God, so far as it is in this life possible, requires for its explanation greater experience and light of knowledge than I possess, he says. For so great are the trials and so profound the darkness, spiritual as well as corporal, which souls must endure if they will attain to perfection, that no human knowledge can comprehend them nor experience describe them. He only who has passed through them can know them, but even he cannot explain them. Therefore, while touching but slightly on the subject of this dark night, I trust neither to experience nor to knowledge, for both may mislead me, but solely to the holy scriptures, under the teaching of which I cannot err, because he who speaks therein is the Holy Ghost. Nevertheless, I accept the aid of experience and knowledge, and if through ignorance I should err, it is not my intention to depart from the sound doctrine of our Holy Mother of the Catholic Church. And so that's the author's submission to the church. Um, you know, I'm not Catholic, but it doesn't matter. There's some beautiful writings from the Catholic Church. I resign myself absolutely to her light and bow down before her decisions. Um, this is where he's just saying he's, he's dedicated to the Catholic Church. So he says, it is not any personal fitness which I recognize in myself that has led me to undertake this work so high and so difficult, so but solely my trust in our Lord, who I hope will enable me to speak on account of the great necessities of many souls. Many persons begin to walk in the way of virtue, our Lord longing to lead them into the obscure night, that they may travel onwards into the divine union, make no progress, and sometimes because they will not either enter upon this night or suffer him to lead them into it, and sometimes also because they do not understand their own state and, their, and are destitute of fit and wise directors who may guide them to the summit of the mount. How miserable it is to see many souls to whom God has given grace to advance and who, had they taken courage, would have reached perfection, remain satisfied with narrow-minded views of God's dealings through want of will or through ignorance or because there is not one to direct their steps and to teach them how to go onwards from the beginning. And in, in the end, when our Lord has compassion on them and leads them on in spite of these hindrances, hindrances, uh, they arrive late with much difficulty and less merit because they have not submitted themselves to his ways nor suffered him to plant their feet on the pure and certain road of union. Uh, though it is true that God who conducts them can do so without these helps still because they do not yield themselves up to him and they merit less because they do not submit their will whereby their sufferings are increased. There are souls who, instead of abandoning themselves to the care and protection of God, hinder him rather by um, their indiscreet behavior or resist him like little children who, when their mothers would carry them in their arms, struggle and cry that they, when, that they may be allowed to walk. And these souls make no progress, or if they do, it is comparable only to the walking of an infant child. And so he goes on here, but I think that's all we'll read tonight, because um, I'll be doing this show every single night. <laughs> God willing, I'll be able to do the show every night um, for two months at least, hopefully, Lord willing. And um, but that's just it. You know, we, we, without God, I mean, we've got nothing. It's dark. You know, there's good stuff going on on the earth. And there's, you know, there is still goodness. You know, people, there's still good people. There's still good things happening. But, but not for everybody. And so, you know, many people are experiencing really hard times. And without God, we're just lost, just lost. So yeah, I, I would just pray. I would just hope and pray that you would open up your heart. You know, if you're listening to me, that you would just open up your heart to just call out to God and just say, 
God, wherever you are, whoever you are, I need you to come and wrap your arms around me. I need you to show me that your love is real and true. And he will do it. And you just need to be open to receive that love from him, to allow his mercy and his compassion and his goodness to just enter into your spirit and your soul and just surround you with comfort, you know, as you're sitting there. So if you're struggling and you can't cope tonight, you're thinking, I don't know how I'm going to do another day. I don't know how I'm going to do another night. You know, I just can't do it. I've been there. That's why I'm doing these shows because I've been there so many times. And, you know, two of my brothers killed themselves. One of, one of my sisters was suicidal and she had a gun and she would, she would disappear for days and we wondered if she had killed herself somewhere. Um, my dad was suicidal and he used to go out on the freeway and try to get hit by semi trucks and stuff. Um, my mom had suicidal ideation. And um, so I just grew up in that. That's how I grew up in suicidal ideation and suicide around me all the time. And so, you know, I just, that's the way I was going to go. You know, it just was ingrained in me from, from when I was really little. And so, you know, if you're struggling tonight and you're having a hard time and you have nobody to talk to and there's nobody around that seems to really care, just know that God does care and he does love you and he, he doesn't want this for you. He didn't want any of that stuff for me. He didn't want me to suffer like I did. I know he didn't. And he doesn't want that for anybody, you know, and, 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 you know, reach out, call a crisis line. Like if you can't cope, you call a crisis line, call somebody, you make a phone call, you know, and get that help. Because why? Because you, you should have it. You deserve it. I thought for years, you know, I couldn't get help. Like we don't get help. You know, I grew up abused. You don't get help when you're abused. You just deal with it, roll with punches, you know. And it's like, you know, I realized at the age of 42, other people get help. Why can't I get help? So I started, I started reaching out and getting help. And still, I still struggle. Like I'm saying, I still have problems. Nothing is perfect, you know. It's not a perfect situation. But um, I know now that I can reach out for help. It's perfectly okay. And because sometimes there is nobody around. There's no friends. There's nobody. So tonight, like while you're sitting there, if you're, if you're sitting there and you're just having a hard time and you're like, I can't even focus on anything. I can't breathe. Too, too much coming against me or whatever you're dealing with in this in this in this life you know it can be so so devastating and so hard just imagine yourself sitting there tonight and just realizing that the dawn is coming i said i do this show at night because you know many people are hurting and struggling at night and there's nobody to talk to there's nobody around that seems to care you know and it's like well i do because i've been there i know what it's like and you know just realize the dawn is right around the corner it's coming within a few hours and if you can just realize that the precious Holy Spirit can send my spirit over to you, then you can imagine that I'd be sitting there with my arm around your shoulders and I'd be holding your hand through the night. I'd be holding your hand. So if you're struggling tonight, you're not alone. And just know that God loves you. And in my spirit, I'll sit with you through the night because the precious Holy Spirit can do things like this. Because people say, well, how would you know where I'm at? <laughs> how would you even know who I am? It's like the precious Holy Spirit knows all things and, and, and can make things like that happen, right? So if you're struggling, just know that I'm my, in my spirit, I'm with you. I'll sit with you till the dawn, the dawning of a new day, which is coming in a few hours, right? And maybe it'll be a better day. Maybe it won't. But, it, but you, you, you have to stick it out. I'm telling you right now, stick it out, do another day. And then you do another day and you do another day and you keep going until it gets better, right? Do not give up. Do not give up. No, don't let these things win this fight. Don't let whatever it is that's come against you to win this fight. Stick it out, you know? And, you know, reach out like I said call a crisis line call somebody but do not give up right I want to read this one before we go here this is hymns of the apostolic church and this is from Brownlee as well Robert Brownlee and um, 
This one says, morning awakes and morn awaking sings. Light speeds from heaven to earth with glowing wings. Haste to the tomb, ye mourners, haste with glee. Christ hath arisen from death's grim fetters free. Gone are the night, the terror, and the gloom. Christ hath arisen and left the awful tomb. Death now is dead, the grave hath lost its power. Death and the grave are vanquished at this hour. And thou art the Christ, the victorious Christ art thou. Death has no sting from grave, no victory now. Glory to thee, O Christ, thy people bring. Thou art our God and our immortal King. Hallelujah. Praise be to the Lord. And, you know, this is just it. He, Christ won the battle, won the victory, defeated death. And he's the only one that could do that for us. He defeated death for me. He took my death upon himself. So, you know, this earth suit can't stay here, but eventually I'll be going home to be with the Lord. But in the meantime, he wants us to stay here and do, you know, his will in the earth. And that is to love God first place, love our neighbor as ourselves. That's simple, right? It seems like it should be simple, but it's not. But I'm just telling you, God wants you to stick it out. He wanted me to stick it out. He told me to live. He just, he basically just whispered in my ear this tiny little voice, you know, that, that was just so small. I barely hear it, you know. I felt this like tapping on my shoulder. I'm like, you know, paying attention. I'm like, okay. Uh, he says, live, live. And I'm like, oh, that has to be God. That's God. <clears throat> of course, the enemy of God, the Satan, the evil one, would want me to die, would want me to kill myself, right? And I thought, no, God is telling me to live because God is life. God is love. God is goodness and truth. God created all of this. God created the Satan. The Satan, the enemy of God, the the the, the evil one, is a created being. <laughs> he, and he's not even in God's image. We are. That's why he hates us. So, you know, what I'm telling you is you're in God's image. He loves you. You bet you he does. And he doesn't want to lose not one. And he wants... He wants you to, to to have his victory in you. See, I, want, I mean, people would say, oh, you're not living a victorious life. You're broke. You're just about homeless. You're always just about homeless. Your husband died. You know, you, you were raped as a child. You can't even have any children. You're never going to have children. So now you got no grandkids, no father, nothing. You know, your health is going downhill. My ankle is about ready to fall off my body. And, you know, I am all victorious in Christ Jesus. As I sit here right here tonight, absolutely. He, he didn't say anything that there wouldn't be any suffering. Jesus never said, you know, follow me and everything will be perfect. He never said that. <laughs> he said, follow me. They will hate you. They will persecute you. They persecuted me. They hated me. They're going to hate you. But great is your reward in heaven where it really counts. I tell you, people, that's where it really counts. So, you know, this world is falling apart, as we can see, and it's going to get worse and worse, and there's going to be more people hurting and struggling and not knowing what to do, you know. And without God, what do you have? Nothing. So I've got all that I need because I've got God. And so, you know, I just, I just pray for you, you know, Father God. I'm just going to pray right now before we finish up. Father God, you see all the people around the world right now who are hurting and struggling, and they don't know how they're going to even do it at a minute. And like I said earlier, Father God, wrap your arms around them and, and meet their needs, all of their needs, whatever those needs may be, you know, spiritual, physical needs, emotional, psychological needs, whatever it is, meet their needs, you know, ease their pain. You're the only one that could truly help us, and you do move on behalf of your children, and you do... You do move with the precious Holy Spirit to comfort those who are in need of your comfort and your love. And you said, you know, in your words, you know, you are our, you're our protector. You're our high tower. You are the rock of our salvation. You are the firm foundation. And we need that firm foundation, Lord. Don't let us slip, Father God. Keep us on that path before you. Don't let us get off to the right. Don't let us get off to the left. Just keep us on that path, that straight and narrow path to you, to your love, to your goodness, to your mercy, compassion, and everything that is good. And help us to get through these, these hard times, Lord. There's people out here who are hurting, who don't know how they're even going to get through, and they're not going to get through tonight. Many people. 
and be there and receive their spirits, Lord. And there's many people that are just hanging on and they don't even know that you love them because they just have no idea. But that I'm just praying that they would open up their hearts and that that they would just call out upon your name. They would say, help me, God, help me. If you're there, you need to help me. And that they would feel your love come into their heart. They would feel you, they would feel you wrapping your arms around them, and they would be like, Oh my god, this has to be God. It has to be. They would know it's you. Father God, make a way for them, make a way for them to be to to have their needs met and to be healed and to be whole in Christ Jesus. And to be comforted and to know that they are truly loved by the creator of this creator of all things creator of the universe, the creator of everything. And you do know us all by name. And you know our troubles, you know our trials, you know what we're going through. We need you tonight, this night. Help us to get through this, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you all. I hope you have a good night, wherever you are. Like I said, if you can't cope, you call a crisis line. But you, if I'm serious. If you're listening to this, I'll, I'm Lord willing, I'll be back tomorrow night. And I'm going to try to do these like I was doing these for a while. And, you know, I thought, well, hopefully somebody will get something out of these. But um, I just feel a leading from the Lord to do this, to do this now. And so I'm just going with it. So I'm like, oh, well, I've got enough money for the Internet for two months. And the Lord provides, the Lord keeps providing. So I'll just do another two months. So that's why I'm doing this. So come back tomorrow night and catch my shows, catch my morning prayer. I'm doing all kinds of shows through the day, you know. I'm going to try to do the four shows per day, every day, uh, you know, until the Lord calls me home. <laughs> so, oh, God bless you all. God keep you in the palm of his hand. Until later. Take care.